Let's solve some mole balances for our batch stirred tank reactor. So our goal here is going to be to develop expressions for the concentration of species with respect to time, or maybe the time needed to um, have some level of conversion of reactants to products. Okay, so our starting point here will be our general mole balance. So we developed this in a previous video. So we can write that for some species J, the flow of J in minus the flow of J out plus the rate of generation of J within the reactor volume is equal to the accumulation of J with time. Okay, so for uh, this system, we have a uh, constant volume, well-mixed uh, batch reactor. So we're not gonna have any flow in or out terms. Uh, we can again assume that the reactor is spatially uniform, so we can write the generation just as the product of the rate of formation times the volume. And if we rewrite the number of moles of J as the concentration of J times the volume, uh, if we assume we're at constant volume, we can pull the volume out of this time derivative uh, to come up with this uh, simple mole balance that the change in concentration of some species J with time is equal to the rate of formation uh, of that species. Okay, so this will be our starting point and we'll look at a few different uh, situations. So the first will be a first order irreversible reaction. So let's say this is some reaction A goes to B. So what we mean by uh, it being first order is that the rate of consumption of A can be re written as some proportionality rate constant times the concentration of A. Okay, so let's put that into our um, mole balance and try and come up with an expression for the concentration of A with time. And so here we're going to assume that the reactor is initially charged with pure A. So CA is going to be equal to CA naught at time equals zero. Okay, so if we write our mole balance, we can write that DCA DT is equal to minus KCA. So the right hand side here is negative because uh, A is a reactant, so it's uh, disappearing with time. So its rate of formation is negative. And so this is a separable equation that we can rearrange and integrate. So we can take the integral of DCA over CA from uh, CA naught at time equals zero to CA at some uh, later time t. So our right-hand side of the expression is just gonna be the integral of minus k dt integrated from zero to t. Okay. So um, we can solve this uh, for t if that's of interest. So uh, the time would be minus one over k times the natural log of ca over ca naught. So this might be the more useful form of the expression if we want to, for example, uh, calculate the time needed to uh, convert A from some starting concentration to some uh, lower specified concentration. We can also solve this equation for CA, so to get a concentration profile. So CA is going to be equal to the initial uh, concentration times this exponentially decaying function with time. Okay, so we can look at graphically what that concentration profile uh, looks like. So here we could plot the concentration of uh, each of our species, so A and B in this case, uh, normalized to the initial concentration. So the profile for A is going to be this uh, decaying function, so this is CA, and our concentration profile for uh, B is gonna look something like this. All right, so let's look at a slightly more uh, complicated example. So um, let's look at a reaction A going to uh, some products, uh, so let's say again B, but here we have a second order reaction, which means that we can express the rate of consumption of A now as KCA squared. So it depends on the square of the concentration of A 
uh, rather than just CA. Okay, so again, uh, we can write our mole balance, DCA DT is equal to minus KCA squared. And again, this is a separable equation uh, that we can just rearrange and integrate. So again, we're gonna assume we have a reactor initially charged with uh, pure A at some concentration CA naught. And our right-hand side here, we're just gonna integrate minus K dt uh, from zero to T. Okay, so solving here for the time needed to achieve some level of conversion of um, A from a starting concentration CA naught to uh, some specified concentration CA, it's going to be one over K, the reaction rate constant, times one over CA minus one over CA naught. So again, this will be the useful form if we want it to um, find a, a certain reaction time. And alternatively, we can write this as the concentration of A, and so this is gonna be equal to CA naught over one plus KT. Okay, so the last example we'll look at is the case of a reversible reaction. So in many cases, it's um, a reasonable approximation to say that we can uh, neglect the reverse reaction rate. Um, but in general, all reactions are going to be reversible. And so there, we're going to encounter many situations uh, where we need to uh, take into account the reverse rate of reaction to accurately uh, quantify the concentration with time. Okay, so let's look at a system a reversibly reacting going to B, and we'll say that these bo uh, both reactions are elementary as written, which means that uh, we can uh, express the forward rate of reaction uh, with a reaction rate constant Kf as just uh, that rate constant times the concentration of A. And we can express the reverse um, rate as just the concentration of B uh, times that reverse rate constant. Okay, so here the rate of consumption of A is going to be equal to the forward rate of reaction minus the reverse rate of reaction since that reaction uh, is actually generating A. Okay, so we can uh, put this into our uh, mole balance, uh, but we can realize if again we have a, a reactor, reactor that's initially charged with pure A at some concentration CA naught, that by stoichiometry, we can write that CB is equal to CA naught minus CA. So essentially what this tells us is that any A that is uh, disappearing is uh, stoichiometrically going to be converted to B. Okay, so now we can write our mole balance with just, uh, just in terms of CA. So what this looks like is Again, this is uh, the right hand side is going to be the rate of formation of A. So this is going to be minus the uh, forward rate plus the reverse rate with CB being written as CA naught minus CA. Okay. So now we could uh, integrate this expression again from CA naught to CA, grouping all our terms on the left hand side that involve CA. So our denominator here is gonna be the forward rate Kf Ca minus the reverse rate written in terms of Ca. And then our left-hand side will just be minus dt integrated from zero to t. To integrate this expression, we can make use of a substitution variable, which we'll call u. So the most convenient choice here for our substitution variable is to make u essentially the uh, denominator of uh, our left-hand side. Uh, so the forward rate minus the reverse rate. And if we do that, we can come up again with expressions for 
uh, solving explicitly for time, which would be the ex this expression shown here, where we have um, the reciprocal of the sums of the forward and reverse rate constants times the natural log of the forward rate minus the reverse rate. minus this natural log of the forward rate constant times uh, CA naught. That's sort of the natural log of the initial rate. Okay, so this again might be our more useful form if we want to calculate the time needed uh, to uh, convert A to some extent. And we can also cal calculate the concentration of A as a function of time. So what that would look like is it's equal to CA naught times one minus this term. Okay, so Hopefully that showed you how to uh, solve mole balances for a few simple situations in a batch stirred tank reactor. Uh, so we'll see in the next few lectures how you can do this for continuous reactors as well.